guys in today's video i'm going to show you how to do this effect right here using a photo and putting it across several different pictures that we're going to create so if you like this little effect here then please follow along so first thing we're going to do is open up a new document i've already done this over here so there's my blank document i'm just going to zoom out a little bit so this is really simple and it will probably take five minutes. You guys would use your own images for this and not necessarily the stock ones I've got over here. These are just simply to show you guys how to do the effect. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our photo. For me, I'm going to use this group one, which I've just shown you to be quick and efficient. So I'm just going to drag that in. I'm going to zoom out a moment and just going to resize this image because it's far too big. I'm just going to drag that down to fit the canvas and just make sure it fills it and zoom back in for a moment and just line that up a little bit bigger on the top so i'm going to drag that over a little bit to make room for the faces in the frame so that should be fine okay so the next thing we need to do is just create a frame which is really simple we're going to grab our rectangle just going to drag that out to any kind of size you want for a frame so that will do fine so at this point we want to turn off our fill so if we come over here to the white fill there, we're going to turn that to be transparent with that little circle in the middle and our stroke we're going to have as white. And that is far too small for the stroke. So we're going to come up here to the stroke section and we're going to bring that up to around 11. If you guys are happy with that. So you'll notice straight away that we've got these rounded corners. I don't like that personally because it won't look authentic. So we're just going to tap back on that, come back up to your stroke section again. And on your join section right there, I want you to choose the mitre join, that one right there. And once we come off here again, you can see now the straight. So next thing we're going to do quickly is give that a little gradient just to make it look a bit more realistic. So we're going to come up to the stroke and over to gradient. And we'll leave this side white, but this one here, we're just going to change to slightly off white. Just move up slightly towards that gray area. So it's something like that will be fine. And just leave that. So next thing you want to do is put a drop shadow on there. So back over to our layers, down to our effects, outer shadow, and for our radius and offset, we're just going to put 10 pixels and hit that enter key. So there is our frame done. It is all simple from here. So what you want to do now is start positioning this to where you want to get your faces in. So we'll focus first of all on these guys, but we want to rotate this. We don't want to keep it straight because it looks boring. So we're going to give it a little bit of style. And we'll just bring that over like that. Don't worry about it coming off the photo. If you guys want to shrink it down, you can. It's entirely up to you. Maybe we will do that just to keep it on the picture itself. So there's our first frame. So all we're going to do from here is start copying and pasting these, rotating them and just making sure we cover every other face. So first of all, we're going to hit Command C for copy, Command V for paste. And we're just going to get that move tool and we'll just drag this over now. We're going to start getting in all these other faces, making sure you don't forget any. So we'll get them ones in there. Don't worry about this overlapping. We're going to fix that in a moment and we'll paste again Command V. And we'll get these other guys in over here. And we'll just make that a little bit more creative there. And just make try and get as many faces in as you can. So if we cover all them guys right there, that should be fine. And we'll paste again, Command V. And this one's a bit tricky down there, but we'll see what we can do with that. We may just have to move this one over a little bit and get her in the frame underneath. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so that image will rotate just slightly. And just bring that over. And we can just decide whether we want her in this picture or that picture. So we'll do the same again, Command V, and literally guys, just keep bringing in them until you cover everyone's faces in the photo. Okay, so at this point, I don't have enough room in the frame to get this last guy in over here. So we're just going to have to disregard him from the project. So once we've got all of these selected now, all we need to do is count how many frames we've got. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
So we pay attention to our background layer now. We've got to select that one. And I need you to make nine copies of this background. And this will be dependent on how many picture frames you've got as to how many copies you need. So for this one, we need nine. So we're going to hit that Command C for copy and just hit Command V another eight times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the important thing right now is to ensure you don't move any of these photos because if you do, it's going to knock the alignment out and it's not going to look right. So once we've got these selected, all we've got to do now is embed them into each one of these frames up here. And to do that, we've just got to drag it up, pay attention to this blue bar right here and just drag it over to the right until you see it indent like that and then let it go. So now that is inside of that frame and we've got to do the same thing on all of these. So up, over and drop it in. And just get every single one of your boxes. And there you go, that is pretty much 90% of that done. So you can see how easy that was getting rid of the image behind it and masking it all into all of these individual photos. And they all still line up, as you can see. We can start moving these around now if you guys want to overlap them differently. So if we grab this one, for instance, and we drag that one to the top. That now sit on top of them ones. You could do this with all the different photos. So this one here, we'll have that one on the top as well to sit on top of that one underneath. And it all depends on how you want to line this one up. That one will probably have to come on top of here because of her face. So if we drag that one up, just like that. And this is down to you how you want to arrange your photos, but that's that piece done. So all we've got to do now is stick a background on here. So if we come back over to the stock section, if you guys aren't seeing the stock section, just head up to your view, down to your studio, and just make sure you've got stock checked. So for those of you who don't know, we've got three websites here on the stock section. These are all free to use images, however you like. All that they require is you give written credit to any of the authors or original artists of the photos. Okay, so now we've done that, we're just going to find our background and I'm just going to find a table. And I'm just going to select that one, drag it over and it's going to come back to our layers. We're going to put that in the background. We're going to zoom out quickly to rearrange the size of that because it's huge and just drag that down to the size of your canvas. And just zoom back in. Obviously, you guys would use your own image in here of you and your friends or holidays or something like that. But the idea is to have one big image which spreads across all of them so it has a little effect to it. So once you've done this, you can generally select all of these and you can resize it if you like. And just move them around freely. I'm just going to undo that. If you want to keep the proportion, just hold down shift as you resize. And you can just move that around. As you like you can add more pictures into this if you want to and you can get as creative as you like with this if you want to do different photo frames for instance I've done one over here using Polaroids and it's generally the same principle that we just did but as you can see here if I click on my group it has got one big rectangle and one smaller gray rectangle inside it the only difference here is now we need to put the image inside of this gray bit so just to quickly demonstrate I'm just going to put in some food and I'm just going to look for something a bit more unique so it doesn't just look like one picture. Okay, so I found this image here which should work quite well hopefully. I'm just going to drag that over and we just need to zoom out again and resize this because it's far too big. And all you've got to do now is just make sure you cover your photos in the size. It doesn't have to be specific. So something like that will be fine. And back over to our layers, just going to put that behind it, but on top of the table in the background. This table image was also found in the stock section. Okay, so because we've got three pictures this time, we need three copies of this. So Command C and paste that two more times. And we're just going to drop that now inside of the grey on each one of them. So we open up that one, drag that in there, and the same in there. So as you can see, exactly the same effect, different photo frame style. And you can generally get as creative as you like, guys. Make your own different types of frames. And it's a really good effect. It's really simple. So if you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And of course, hit that notification bell. 
and keep up to date with all my latest videos. But for now, guys, have a great day and I will see you in the next tutorial.